Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I'm Mateo 301 and this is your channel for everything VR related. So today we're going to be discussing the future of XR technologies. This is everything from the immediate, like what games are coming out, what should we expect on the content side, holiday sales, all the way to a few years in the future, which way the technology is going to go, the influence of AI, and every other twist and turn along the way. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by the TCL Ray Neo XR glasses. How does a massive 215 inch display with a 120 hertz refresh rate and super bright OLED colors sound to you? This is the ideal accessory for tasks like watching movies from your phone, working from your laptop while traveling, or my personal favorite use case, connecting this to my Steam Deck for some top notch gaming. Now, if you want to connect this to other devices that don't natively support USB-C output, there's a mirror screen portable adapter available that doubles as a 4500 milliamp hour battery now i'm no stranger to xr glasses and the image quality from the ray neo definitely impressed me so if you want to find out more go use the link down in the description okay so let's start things off with the more immediate factors like content and holiday sales we'll start with content for a little bit and what can we expect coming out of vr in the next six to 12 months this is the point where the industry completely understands where software needs to excel I'm in a lot of discussions with different VR communities and they all understand we want better software. We keep seeing more and more hardware and it's amazing that the hardware is improving, but it doesn't really help us if we're getting shallow title after shallow title. Now to compound this, Meta has purchased multiple development studios over the years and they've now had those studios for two, three or even more years. So what does that mean? Well, it means we should have some really good first party titles coming from Meta soon. And we could see that in the immediate future with Asgard's Wrath 2. IGN just put out some footage. The response has been extremely positive. This is a 60 plus hour RPG, high end voice acting. They're really trying to push the Quest 3 to its limits. So I'm really excited for that title. Now, that's not the only studio they have. Remember, there's other big names like Ready at Dawn that gave us the absolutely fantastic Lone Echo series and Echo VR. Now, I understand Echo VR is a sore point for some individuals. However, the studio wanted to work on a brand new IP, and I definitely encourage that. I really want to see what they bring to the table in the future. Additionally, Meta also acquired Camouflage, the studio that gave us the fantastic Iron Man VR, and supposedly they're now working on a Batman title, which I think would be amazing. So, Obviously, Meta has plenty of talent to pull from, and the fact that high-end games take a few years to develop, and that's how long they've had these studios, I'm expecting to see a lot more high-quality first-party applications in the near future. Additionally, Meta has been pursuing big-name video games for quite some time now. They're desperate to get a title like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto into VR. Now, we don't know what the state of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is, they announced that over two years ago, and then it's been radio silence ever since. We don't know if there's technical complications that aren't allowing the game to be ported, whatever the case may be. However, we definitely know that Meta is actively pursuing a big name title, and they want to bring that into VR. So we'll see what happens there. I'm excited to see what could come out of that because they're not going to stop until they get what they want. Now, recently, there's been some rumors surrounding ByteDance and Pico. Supposedly, they were shutting down, but ByteDance has come out and said, no, that's absolutely false. And we know previously they were putting a lot of money into software development, and let's hope that eventually pays off. Like I said, it doesn't matter if they threw a billion dollars into it last year. It's going to take a few years before games start getting developed. So hopefully, Pico understands that if they really do want to stay in this race, it's not just hardware. They got to back some first party games. The only one we've heard of was Dance Dance Revolution. So we'll see what happens from the Pico side in the future. And Sony is playing the same game. Sony understands that if they want to be competitive in VR, that they're going to have to bring out some of the big guns. So hopefully they tap into some of their bigger name titles like God of War. Like, that's something that I just think would work fantastic in VR. I can't wait. Please do it, Sony, because Sony is definitely trailing on the content side so i'm hoping they learn their lesson over it's almost been a year now you know we're, we're approaching eight nine months so we're going into the holiday season hopefully they learn their lesson and they start with a discount yep i'm pretty sure this holiday season we're going to see the playstation vr2 go on sale 
it's too early to see the quest three go on sale but there'll definitely be plenty of quests on ebay if you want you know a quest two even though i'd recommend the three over it for multiple reasons but that's a different video however you might be able to snag a cool bundle deal on amazon or maybe even from meta so they'll bundle the quest with some games or maybe an elite strap elite strap a battery pack you might see those options so that's the immediate future of vr additionally there's gonna be a mixed reality push love it or hate it developers love playing with new toys it's definitely a whole new medium some people are eating it up they want more robust mixed reality experiences we're gonna be in the gimmick stage for a while kind of like 2017 vr it's gonna take a while for developers to figure it out it's gonna take a while for more robust software to be made and obviously not a lot of people have the headset for mixed reality right now so if you want to make a profit you want to develop to the largest audience so obviously less resources are going to be invested in mixed reality at the immediate point but it's definitely going to grow as the future goes on and i hope we find better you know more robust use cases for it. okay so since i mentioned hardware let's move into that and 2024 is going to be pretty crazy there's a couple items we already know are coming and they're going to change the industry now definitely everything is kind of merging to one point which i'll get to but as of right now we have the apple vision pro coming which is you know that super high-end consumer device which will definitely shake up the industry it's supposedly a quest light which will most likely just be a mixed reality headset at like 200 bucks so that could also have a big impact on making the device go more mainstream there's been rumors or leaks for the pico 5. pico likes the one up meta so maybe they'll do that again and finally there's other more nuanced devices like the visor so the visor is like a super slim vr headset for people who want productivity applications and that is basically the best segue into where we're all merging we have something like you know the super high-end apple which is like a laptop you're wearing on your face which is a great design but not really practical too expensive low battery life we don't know about comfort and stuff like that on the opposite side of that you have something like meta ray-bans or ray-ban metas this is just a pair of glasses with some technology in them they pair well to your phone now the future is to get a vr ar device slimmed down to eyeglasses that's where the industry wants to go they want this to be a computing device they want you to get as much use out of your xr device as you do your cell phone so that's way out in the future technology's got to advance to get there but we're seeing the first devices that are gonna make this come true we're seeing you know the high end this is everything you could get out of ar experience from apple we're seeing you know the cheaper end hey this is good enough for everybody in the quest 3 it's a device that i think is finally good enough for everybody and then we're seeing the more nuanced in between versions now moving into something a lot more nuanced that'll definitely shake up the industry is going to be the usage of ai technology right now we're seeing gimmicky stuff how most technology starts off zuckerberg showed off ai snoop dog dm which come on i mean it's a bit of a joke however we have seen other applications of ai like characters or npcs in skyrim that can have full-fledged conversations with you and that is pretty insane for someone who likes a deep role-playing type of game additionally ai is going to be insane for content generation now we've seen it again in gimmicky manners like hey i want to make a picture or i want to do this kind of trippy 3d animation we see those all the time but they're working on the ability to create whole worlds and meta's been doing this for a while basically like you jump into a meta horizons and you say okay give me a blue sky add thunder and lightning to it you know i want a valley and then an ocean over there and a ship and it just starts to generate it and that is the true future of these applications that are going to come out we're going to be able to build whole worlds just using our voice and then get in there and tweak them to make them perfect exactly how we want that is the true future of ai technology and my only fear regarding it is everything's going to have like this undertone of fakeness like you're going to be able to go that's ai generated that's ai generated because you just feel it's slightly off so i'm scared of losing that human touch and i'm scared that when you push things towards an algorithm it spits out you know repetitive nonsense that we just know is addictive kind of like what we're seeing 
in other aspects of the industry right now. We're not making games that are fun. We're making games that are addictive with gambling mechanics because they make more money. So I don't want to see us move in that direction, but the industry follows money. So there's a lot of good that could come out of it and probably a little bad also. And the final topic I want to go over is that everyone in the XR industry right now is trying to find ways to increase retention. We want users to have more reason to use their XR device. Now, we're still figuring out what that is because gaming can be quite exhausting. So people don't stay in a VR game as long as they typically do with a flat screen game. And we just love retention. It's, retention is good from everything to serving up ads to basically claiming that your software is the best because more people spend a lot of time in it. So obviously the goal of retention is there, but we really want to bring more reasons to use this technology in your daily life to turn it into the next computing platform and to have everyone walking around with, you know, a pair of XR goggles on through their daily life. Will we get there? Probably eventually. I think it will happen eventually as everything gets better, the software and the hardware. And that's pretty much what we're moving into. 24 is going to be the start of some big things. Everything is going to improve. The software is going to get there. The hardware is going down so many new routes. It's extremely exciting. And even though I know XR technology will continue to go through these really steep hills and valleys where we either feel super excited or we feel like the technology is dead. For the first time in a while, I'm actually really excited again. Like I'm really looking forward to things to come, even though, like I've said, mixed reality so far is not really my thing. I'm excited to see people enjoying it. And I definitely want to see where it goes. You know, there are some applications like Piano Vision that have blown my mind. And I say, OK, yeah, this is the future right here. You know, having this visual representation teach me. I love learning stuff. That is amazing. And that's a great use case. So who knows what's in store for the future? But if you guys have any comments, I would love to hear them. Go ahead. Typey type, type, get busy right now. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing.